Atlanta! If I would have brought this up a week ago, you guys would have said, you're crazy, man. Get off the crack. Now it doesn't look so crazy. Maybe Thomas Tatar either gets traded this season by the Montreal Canadiens, or if they're looking like they are going to be a Stanley Cup contender this year, they keep him as like a, a rental that you didn't have to pay for. And then he walks in free agency. But that's the thing here is that with these guys who you have a strong inkling that they might not stay with the team or you know you're not going to be able to afford them, like it's always a real pain to know that, okay, like, yeah, he might help us on a Stanley Cup run, but we're going to lose him for nothing? Like, dude, the Islanders, I know they're saying, chanting, we don't need him with John Tavares, but I guarantee you that they're upset that they didn't get anything for him in return. Such a lucrative player. And look, Thomas Tatar, he's no John Tavares, but I'm sure he could fetch a pretty penny on the market for a team looking for a goal scorer, skilled player. And Bergevin is in a tough spot here because after this season, like I said, Tatar is a free agent. He gets healthy scratched last night by Claude Julien. Hasn't played well the last few games. Um, he's being singled out by a lot of Habs fans as the whipping boy. And he's not exactly young for hockey player standards. He's hit the big 3-0, right? So, look, in the offseason, we know he's going to want to get paid. He's going to want a big contract. But from what we just saw in the past offseason, I know with the situation in the world it affects free agency but guys like Mike Hoffman signing one-year deals Anthony Duclair thought he was gonna get paid by the Ottawa Senators he did not I know it's defensemen but still the same type of thing Travis Hamanick okay he wanted to hit the market he's like okay I'm gonna get paid set my family up nope gets a one-year deal with Vancouver so that's the thing if you're the Montreal Canadiens you look at Tatar and yes you know he's gonna want money are you really ready to pay a 30-year-old uh, a good pretty penny here to stay with your team for somewhat long-term? Like, look, he's not going to get a seven-year deal, but uh, I think he's going to be looking to get more than a one-year deal and at least over three million bucks. And with things like the Weber contract, the Carey Price contract, the Gallagher contract just signed, the Habs are, it's getting up there in terms of tight and cap space. You're going to have to pay Nick Suzuki soon. Jesperi Kotkiemi ain't going to be cheap. They also just signed Josh Anderson to a huge deal after acquiring him in the offseason for Max Domi. So look, dude, I mean, they don't have all the money in the world to hand out to everybody. So a guy like Tatar might and probably will have to be a casualty. And you're seeing cracks starting to form here with him being a healthy scratch last night. Saturday night, Hockey Night in Canada, huge game against your biggest rival, uh, a team you're trying to catch in the standings and you haven't beaten this year, and Tatar is a healthy scratch? To me, that says a lot, okay? Sometimes healthy scratch, you don't look too much into it. This one, to me, speaks volumes. And look, I know people in Montreal, they love this guy, the Tomas Tata. Everybody loves saying his name like that, eh? And look, uh, Nick Suzuki wasn't the only awesome piece the Habs got in that Max Pacioretty trade. Thomas Tatar reinvigorated his career here in Montreal. I mean, you look at his numbers since joining the Habs. In 2018-19, 80 games, 25 goals, 58 points. That's solid. Um, and then last year, 1920, in 68 games, 22 goals, 61 points. So, dude, he's been playing like a star lately. But again, I mentioned the age, 30 years old. And we're at an age in the NHL where you can't be paying guys for what they've done. You have to be paying them for what you think they're going to do. And I know that's a risky, dangerous business because sometimes they don't pan out and then they end up with a bad contract. But you look at teams like San Jose and LA, for example, paying guys like Eric Carlson, huge contracts, Drew Doughty. Okay, he's still a good defenseman, but in my, uh, my opinion right now, he's overrated and he's making way too much money for what he provides right now. Like, you got to be really careful paying guys for what they've already done, okay? That, that really might hurt your franchise. And you can look at a guy like P.K. Subban, who is uh, the opposite of that. When the Habs paid P.K. Subban, made him one of the richest defensemen in NHL history, they were paying him for what he was going to bring to them. And of course, he brought them a Norris before, but it was really what he was going to bring them in the future, and that really hasn't panned out. So that's why I say the Habs are in a tough spot, because do you try to get something for Tatar that can help you in the future and right now in your cup run, or do you keep him and say, okay, he's been great for our franchise, he's going to score some goals for us, help us in this playoff run? That's why it's a really tough situation here for Bergevin. 
Uh, but a really interesting one and a realistic one. It's not I'm pull, not pulling it out of nowhere like, oh, Connor McDavid trade rumors. No, no, no. This is like some legit stuff here. A real situation that the Habs are going to have to face. Habs fans, what do you think should happen with Thomas Tatar here, okay? Do you trade him, get some assets maybe for the future, and hopefully for right now as well, you let him play out, maybe he can help you win a Stanley Cup, and then he walks in the offseason? Like, uh, let me know what you want to do here. Uh, if you're new here, new hockey content every single day, like, subscribe. See you in the next one.